Good morning and welcome to Crochet Thursday. Today we're going to be learning the basic beginning stitch, the single crochet. But to start with, because this is our first time meeting together, I'm going to show you some of the basic things you need to get. Um, and just remember not to go overboard because you want to make sure that you like this craft before in this hobby before you continue to go any further. The first thing you want to do is get some cotton yarn. Cotton yarn is what you need when you're making wash rags, dishcloths, pot holders, those kind of things because it does not burn easily. If you were to set a hot pan or pot on this yarn, it will not catch on fire or catch on fire in the microwave. However, if you use something like this acrylic, which is what most people use, uh, it's going to burn. This will catch on fire, whether it be in the microwave or if you set a hot pad on it, it's going to burn. So we're going to start out with cotton. And you will find that you might like working with cotton, you know, really well. Next, we're going to talk about hooks. There are many different types of hooks out there. Uh, and they come in all different sizes. There is wooden hooks. This is my favorite to use. I like the way it feels and how it just how it flows in my hand. Uh, there's plastic hooks that you can find. There are larger hooks for like rugs and purses and things that you can make, baskets. There's metal hooks. And then there's these nice ergonomical hooks. I find myself using these a lot lately too. Because um, as you crochet, the older you get, arthritis or carpal tunnel, these are great for that. Um, it's got that good rubber grip and just kind of helps you. Um, but the hook itself is metal. Uh, the wooden ones you will not find at Hobby Lobby or Michaels. You will have to go online to Amazon or a crochet store to purchase those. The metal hooks and the ergonomical hooks, you can find them just about anywhere. Walmart, you know, uh, Hobby Lobby, Michaels. The next thing you're going to need, I don't care if you use metal or the plastic, you're going to need a sewing needle to sew in your loose ends in your projects when you're finishing it up because that's what tidies everything up and makes it look nice and smooth and the first project that we're going to be working on is a dish rag see how nice and tight those stitches are this is single crochet very tight knit um, some people might want some stitch markers you can buy a pack of them i think they're 50 cents and they just help you know where your guide is for when you're finishing a row. This keeps you from miscounting and skipping a stitch in your process of crocheting. And remember, crocheting is one hook. Knitting is two. Totally different. I cannot knit. I have tried. Everything ends up in a triangle. So I don't use it. You need a good pair of scissors too. You don't want anything that's been cut in paper with it. You want it strictly for your yarn. And then some people forget what row they're on. You may want to get a counter. You can also find, uh, if you don't want this kind or can't find this kind, um, I did find this at Hobby Lobby. Michaels carries them as well. But if you cannot find it, you can always get one of the uh, walking meters and click it uh, as a counter. So today you're going to be learning what's called a foundation stitch, which is your foundation row. These are called chains. They look like little V's. That's your foundation row. This is your first row, what your first row looks like. And see the different stitching at the top? You still got that V stitch. But see how you have two loops. There's one and there's one. You're going to be crocheting through both of them. As you get better and you get more intermediate, and expert level, some of your patterns will call for front post only, some call for the back post. It really just depends on what you're working on. This is what the second row looks like. And this is what the fourth row looks like. And I have weaved in my end right there. I like to do it as I go through my project. A lot of people like to weave in their ends as they finish. I don't like all those tails hanging. Um, but you want to leave a little bit of a tail as you're crocheting your project because you do not want to cut it at the at a knot and then have it unfray on you. Uh, 
see how this one is? You can't even tell that it's been weaved in. And that's what you want. You don't see any knots either. You can find cotton yarn. You can find it mixed colored, you variegated. Uh, you can find it, you know, all different colors. If you don't like yellow, don't get yellow. That's just what I'm showing you with today to make it easier for you to see. Now, depending on what size hook you use is going to depend on how big your stitches are. If you crochet something very, very tiny with a small hook, your stitching is going to be small. If you use a larger hook, it's going to be larger. Now this, your, this is an H hook that I'm using. It's a five millimeter. H, I, J, and K are what most patterns call for. Um, but if you're doing socks or something like that, you're going to need a smaller hook. You're not going to want something really big and have a bunch of holes. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you the basic stitch today of the single crochet and how to do your foundation and chain stitches. Now, when you're crocheting, what you're going to be working on this week while you're at home by yourself practicing this, you're going to practice your slip knots. So you're going to yarn over, stick your finger in the hole. You're going to grab the yarn that's connected to your ball, your bolt of yarn. And you're going to pull it through. That makes that slip knot. So see, this is what you're doing. I can make my hole larger or smaller. That's a slip knot. See that tail right there? That's your excess that's hanging. That's what we're going to weave in later. So we're going to kind of just tuck that up under our hook. And we're not going to worry about it right now. Now we're going to hold our yarn over our finger, whether you're left-handed or right-handed. You hold it with one hand, whichever hand you are. If you're left-handed like me, you're going to hold it in your left hand. If you're right-handed, you're going to hold it in your right hand. You're going to grab your yarn. I like to stick my index finger like this and make that yarn kind of fall over it. And see, I can play with it and loosen it or tighten it as I need to. I also sometimes will put it through my pinky just to give me extra balance with that control. Sometimes I just... Do just the index finger and I just drop it up under my hands. It's really all on how you use it. Now your tension, you want to get it to where it's not too loose and it's not too tight because you want to be able to stick your hook in those holes. So to start our foundation row, we're going to yarn over the hook. Use that loop right there that's on that hook where that, see where it is and it catches right there. You're going to slide it up under that and pull it through the hole. Okay, we're gonna make 20 of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Because because we are making a wash rag or dishcloth, you do not want to make it much longer than that. Uh, because that depends, that is what's determining your length, okay? If you're making a blanket or a scarf or something like that, of course, this foundation row is going to be a lot longer. But see how they're, they're uniform? They're all kind of the same size. That's what you want. And it's loose enough that I can get that hook through it. Now, to do single crochet, what you're going to do to go up to the next row is you're going to chain one. So we chain one, do the same thing we've been doing, but we're turning it up. Okay, we're not going to go in the hook, in that hole right there that's connected to our hook, okay? You're going to go into that second stitch. So you go in it, yarn over. Pull it through. Now we have two loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over and we're going to pull it through both of those. Go to the next hole, stick the needle in, the crochet hook in. Then you yarn over again, pull it through the hole. Now we have two loops again. We yarn over and pull through both of those loops. See how I'm using that tension right there? Remember, that's how you loosen it or tighten it. Stick the crochet hook in, pull it through, yarn over, go through two. Just like that. 
And we're going to do that all the way till we get to the end. And remember, because these are pre-recorded, you can stop and start at any time. And go back and replay it. Now, as you find out if you like crocheting or not, they have cases you can buy that hold your crochet hooks. Uh, if you go on Amazon and you buy the wooden ones, sometimes it comes with a little pouch or case. Uh, you can buy different bags and things that hold your yarn and make it easy to work with as you're traveling. Let me get to the end of this row and I'll show you what I mean because I have a yarn bag myself that I carry around when I'm working on projects away from home. There's yarn bowls too, and I actually made one here in our ceramics class to hold my yarn at home. But they're little bags that carry all your stuff in it. And at the top of it, you can put a couple of things of yarn in there and it comes through and feeds through the top. So you can just pull it out without having the big bolt sitting everywhere of your yarn. It works really good. Now, we are at the end of our row, so what we're going to do is we're going to chain up one that takes us to that next row, guys, and then we turn our work, and then we're going to start on that next row, and so what you're going to do, remember we don't want front post or back post, we're going to go through the middle, so go through, yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, go through two, and we're going to do that all the way across. Okay, all the way across. Now, you're going to continue that, but I want to show you how to weave in your ends. I like, as I said before, I like to weave in my ends through my project. Some people like to do it at the very end, but I don't like, you don't want to get caught up and getting stuck with grabbing the wrong yarn and realize that you've worked your, your stitch that you've got to sew in instead of using the yarn connected to your hook. Uh, to your bolt so you're gonna sew it in now if you're using multicolored yarn or if you are using different colors and you change colors which we'll get to that at a later date um, you want to make sure that you're going in the color that you're that you have on your needle so that it blends into your project and does not show out okay and then you're just going to pull that tight and then you'll cut being very gentle and very careful you will cut that extra yarn off see what a straight edge we have now and you can't even tell but if you cut it off at that knot it's going to unravel when you wash it that first time anything can happen but see how nice that looks all right guys so what you're going to do this week you're going to practice just for review you're going to practice your chain stitches, your foundation row, making sure you're not twisting and turning as you're learning, and crocheting or it'll mess up your work, and you're just going to get try to get nice uniform rows so that we can do our crochet. Now, when we come back next week, what we're going to be working on is finishing off our washcloth, okay? I'm going to show you how to tie off your yarn uh, at the end when you get to the end of your project how to knot it and tie it off and weave in those ends okay all right till next time i will catch you later have a blessed day